everybody, Pete Meyer here, Motor Age Magazine. Welcome to this very first edition of Motor Rage How To. This is a new series for us, and we hopefully will be able to do what the name implies, show you how to perform different systems, uh, perform certain diagnostic techniques, get comfortable with your diagnostic tools. Hey, we are open to any and all suggestions that you may want to send to us for this series. Now we're gonna start with a topic that I'm very pleased to see around the country, scope use. You remember a few short years ago when I would attend events around the country and I would ask technicians if they were using scopes for their diagnostic power, a very few hands would go up. Now it seems that uh, at least half of the people that attend the sessions that I present anyway are raising their hands and indicating that yes, they are using a scope, but they're still a little unsure of how to use it effectively. So we're going to start this edition of How To, or the series of getting friendly with your scope, how to use your scope for diagnostic applications. All right, so stick around. We'll start with that in just a sec. Okay, okay. Before we dive in and actually hook up our scope to a vehicle and capture those waveforms, we need to start with laying some fundamentals. And one of the very first fundamentals that I wanna make sure you're all comfortable with is exactly how you're going to attach to that wire that you're trying to capture that waveform from, because it's very important that you do it correctly. If not, if not done correctly, you can create some issues that are gonna to come to haunt you or another technician down the road. So let's talk about that first. First thing we wanna talk about is the two techniques that you can use to uh, attach your scope leads, or even your multimeter leads for that matter, to a signal wire or wire that you want to grab a, a waveform from. Uh, one method is back probing, and the other is using a piercing tool to pierce the insulation in order to come into contact with the wire. Again, both have their pros and cons. Let's start with back probing. Okay, the first method I want to talk about is back probing. Back probing uses a tool very similar to this one. It's almost a needle-like device that allows us to come in from the back side an electrical connector along the wiring for the circuit that we want to grab our waveform from and pass that tool all the way through until it actually comes into contact with the connection inside the connector block. Now, this is a good process if you're careful in, in performing the, the procedure because it can help avoid any damage to the wiring, and that's always a big plus. To do it properly, we want to keep in mind that along each wire is a weather seal. We don't want to damage the weather seal in the process. So in order to use this tool or this process properly, it's very important that we follow the wire and get into the space between the weather seal and the insulation of the wire, as you can see here in this picture. A common mistake is to pass the connector pin to where we're on the outside of the weather seal. Now, if we do this, especially on connectors that uh, attach control modules to the harness, it's very possible for us to go into, say, pin number three and inadvertently make contact with one of the pins next door, two or four, or if it's a multiple connector, maybe the one below or above. This may lead to a short circuit that's gonna let the smoke out of that control module that you're trying to grab the signal from. And that's one of, the, one of the reasons we call it the most expensive fuse on the car. So it's very important that you do not allow yourself to move on the outside of that seal and that you know that the pin is going in the connector you want it to go into. Here's another common problem. In this case, the technician has gone ahead and placed his probe, but now he's actually punctured the weather seal itself. He just shoved it right on in there. Now when he removes his probe, there's gonna be a big hole in that weather seal, isn't it? And that's going to make it totally useless. The whole job of the weather seal is to keep moisture out. Why? So we don't get corrosion in the connections. With a lot of the low current circuits that we have on modern vehicles, even a little bit of corrosion can create plenty of voltage drop and we all know what that's going to cause. It's gonna cause circuits that don't work properly if they work at all. And trying to track down that problem could mean some headaches for the technician who inherits it. So when you're going to, uh, again, do this technique, make sure that you pass the tool between the insulation and the inside diameter of the weather seal so that you don't cause damage like this. Now let's talk about piercing. Okay, piercing the wires, just as the name implies, there are a lot of different types of tools available that you can get 
for, for doing this technique. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to pass a, a, a very again, needle-like tip into the outside of the installation so it comes into contact with the wire underneath. Uh, now, this particular tool is the one that came with the PicoScope that I'm going to be using here in the, in the early parts of this series. And it gives a little look like this. Uh, the handle here allows me to adjust the depth of the needle. And then this little thumbnail allows me to position the wire. And we'll just show you how that works. Say so we're going to take the thumb piece, we're going to pull that back, we lay the wire in the upper notch, and then let, uh, release that thumb rail. That's going to help locate the wire so that when we do start turning in the knob here, we'll feel it actually penetrating the installation and come into the contact with the wire. Um, I would advise that you only do this enough to come into contact with the wire. Don't crank down all the way automatically. When you run the scope, and you'll see, we'll experiment with it, uh, the, the less I have to do this, the better. Why? Because the less I actually have to penetrate to get the signal I want, the fewer strands of wiring I'm going to damage. And I, that's one of the negatives of using this technique. Uh, by cranking that down, if I destroy or break a lot of these strands of wiring, that's going to cause uh, a resistance issue in that circuit. As we all know, uh, we need all those strands to carry the current load that that circuit is designed for. When I take some of those out, that puts more strain on the rest of the wiring. That's like having a lot of little mini open circuits, if you will, in the main wire that you're dealing with. Uh, give you a good example. Imagine for a moment a starter cable. And we all know the current load a starter motor puts on the car. So we're not surprised to see that big heavy cable on the battery, are we? No, of course we're not. In terms of current flow, though, one wire, one strand of that cable will still carry the current to the starter motor, won't it? Well, no, it won't, will it? Because there's so much current flow, that one strand can't handle that load. It will very quickly overheat and burn. So you see where I'm going with that. The more I, uh, I damage, the more wiring strands I damage using this technique, the less current capacity that this wire has. That can lead to problems down the road. The other problem with this technique is that when we're all done, we're going to leave a hole. And it's very important that when we're done, we seal that hole. A couple of ways that you can do it. The best is electrical, uh, liquid electrical tape that you can dab on there and let it dry. Um, you want to make sure you seal that for the same reasons that we didn't want to puncture the weather seal in the connector using the back probe method. Because if we don't seal that, that's going to let moisture in. It's going to lead to corrosion and eventually cause a problem in that circuit that we're going to have to go find again. May not happen tomorrow, may not happen next week but it is going to happen. So make sure that you do no harm. If you use the piercing technique, make sure that you uh, seal any holes that you made. The next time we get together, we'll move forward on, on this series on getting friendly with your scope. We'll take a look at uh, what time bases and voltage divisions are, how to pick the ones that you need for the capture that you're trying to get, how to use a schematic to determine uh, where you need to attach your scope leads, and we'll move on from there. Thank you.